Hello, welcome to Sunday Ramble with your host Dave. How are you doing? Today we are going to be talking about the upcoming changes to Hearthstone where Blizzard have made some nerfs to some of the more popular, more powerful cards. And they are the Rockbiter Weapon, the Tuscar Totemic, Call of the Wild, Execute, Charge, Abusive Sergeant, and Yogg Saron. Yes, the big controversial Yogg Saron that uh, has recently been seen in tournaments uh, and has been causing a lot of no, controversy uh, is getting some changes to it. Uh, basically, Blizzard didn't want to see Yogg-Saron in tournaments. Yogg-Saron was meant to be a fun card, so they've basically made some tweaks to it to hopefully try and bring it out of the competitive side and put it back into fun and crazy where it's meant to be. So, what are the changes to all the cards? Well, Rock Biter Weapon now costs two mana when it originally cost one. Tuscar Totemic can now only summon basic totems, as opposed to all the totems. Call of the Wild now costs 9 mana, up from 8. Execute costs 2 mana, up from 1. Charge has been lowered down to 1 mana, but the minion cannot attack the hero the turn it's played on, and the bonus attack is being taken off, so there is none. So basically you're just making a minion charge at another minion which is kind of where they want charge to be. They did make a lot of changes to charge previously to try and limit the, you know, on-board presence. Um, and this is obviously, you know, the leftover from that. Um, so there, yeah. And Abusive Sergeant now has one attack down from two. So he's there just as a 1-1 one -one buff or something. And Yogg-Saron has basically been changed to if he is destroyed, silenced, or transformed, or returned to the owner's hand, then the spell stop. So there are all the changes, and uh, here are a few clips of the cards in question being played, and me sort of chatting about them, and seeing whether or not the changes are justified. Hope you enjoy. The first deck we're going to be looking at in terms of nerfed cards is the Shaman Aggro. Uh, and it has Abusive Sergeant, Rock Biter Weapon, and somewhere in here is the Tuscar Totemic. There it is. So, Abusive Sergeant is going to become a 1 1. Rock Biter Weapon is going to be a 2 cost. And Tuscar Totemic will be summoning only the basic. So, we're going to take a quick look at a few games with the Shaman and just to see just how powerful those cards actually are. Okay, so here we have a state of board where potentially I can Abusive Sergeant the Wrath of the Air Totem, which will give it the plus two attack, but it will also leave me a 2-1 minion on, bo on board, which can contest the Sabretooth Panther. So effectively... Kill that off. And there we go. But because it's a druid, he can just go straight face and kill that because he's only got one health. So the two attack in this particular case isn't all of that. He is still going to be taking the two damage though. So it's basically the, the minion is being changed to a 1 1 because you're wanting the battle cry. You're effectively getting better stats for it being a 2-1. So you're getting more value for it for a 1-drop than you are with other 1-drops, in essence. So that's why. Is he going to... Is he going to... Yeah, he's going to have to kill it. He's stupid not to. Okay, so in this particular case I have drawn both the Rock Biter and the Tuscar Totemic, so that's a really strong starting hand. Shame. I'm going to keep the thing from below because obviously that gets cheaper for each totem, and Flint on Totem is always useful. So, oh and the Abusive Sergeant. Why is the Rock Biter weapon being increased to two? Well, for many reasons. One, because now at the bat I can't hit for three. Not that you'd want to anyway, but you're going to have to wait at least another turn before you can do that. 
Um, and also because of combo one boeing, which we'll probably get to in a bit. Right now, there isn't really anything I can do. Um, abusive sergeant, again, I could plus two attack or I could drop it out as a two one minion. Thus forcing him to take the two damage while only dealing one. So this is again why the abusive sergeant is probably being nerfed slightly. Okay, so this is where we're going to play Tuscar's attempt. Now, right now, he is any random totem. So because of that, I've got to be careful with the placement. Because potentially, he could summon a flung tongue totem. So if I play him that side, then the totem is always placed to his uh, right. So that's why we place it here. When it becomes basic, less of an issue. Oh, there we go. See? That is why placement is key. So we're going to swing in with that. Um, now, oh, I could have coined Abusive Sergeant to kill him off. That was a bit of a misplay. But oh well. That's how that one works. Now, this is why the rock fighter is being changed. So I've dropped some stuff and I've only got one mana free, but that still allows me to rock fighter and deal with something. Rather than having to coin rock fighter or anything like that. Okay, here we go. So once again, Tuscar Totemic, ready to go. Turn three. And turn three, being able to pull a uh, totem golem or a heal your hero or even the draw card is pretty powerful especially the token golem because it's obviously it's a two cast with over charge overload even uh, and you're not getting the downside from that and also uh, the ability to pull a flame tongue totem uh, turn three and potentially clear something off. It's too big of a tempo turn. So there we go. What's he gonna get? Wow. Searing turn. So this is this is effectively what we're gonna be seeing once the nerf comes down. He's gonna come out and he's gonna drop a basic. So the Searing Totem, the Taunt Totem, the Heal Totem and the Spell Power Totem. And that's it. So let's Because right now, I have the potential chance of pulling a Flamethrower Totem of all of them. So I can kill that. And then I would get the tempo advantage. But if we're going to be playing um, with as of the nerf, I would have to be forced to play this. So I can then swing in, kill him. And I'm actually going to earth shot that. Because that prevents him from then playing his own flame tongue totem and potentially killing it off. So he's now got to lightning bolt it or something like that. Okay, and again, since you know, you know you're forced to play these cards as they are. Wow. So this is why the rock biter totem again is being nerfed. It allows me to play the Tuscar totemic and then combo into that. And kill it off. So effectively punishing that turn. There's just amazing tempo. Okay, here we go again. Tuscar Totemic, opening hand. The potential for all sorts of craziness is very good. I like the fact though that uh, Thing From Below doesn't trigger off Tuscar Totemic. This is a good thing. Okay. So I was going to Tuscar Totemic, but again, this is to highlight the uh, power of Rock Biter weapon and both Abusive Sergeant. So I can Abusive Sergeant into him which then allows me to swing in for five. And then I can, because I've got the mana, I can then kill that dude off without having to use the coin. 
speak tempo play. And a yog. Oh, how yog. Okay, so while he's yogs off, this is the reason why he's going to get nerfed, is because potentially he will die during this awesome spell off. And the nerf will be that once he's dead, return to hand or transformed, the spells stop. Right now, if he dies, the spells keep going. So you can effectively stack up a ridiculous number of spells and then just clear. That was a very effective board clip. That was a very powerful yog. I think we're done with Shaman. Just to show that uh, the, the, the face Shaman is definitely not as powerful as it once was. I probably didn't play it to the best of its abilities, but even though I did have strong tempo turns, I still got utterly crushed. Um, but I think that kind of highlights the Shaman changes. It kind of shows that... I think it's more the fact that the, the Shamans are only running those. I mean, there obviously the, the match against the other Shaman ended up being a control Shaman. <laughs> which I, I lost on that one. Um, but I think it was mainly because they want other decks to be out there. And by reducing the power of these particular cards, it means this particular archetype of Shaman will probably go away. Um, I, I lost, but I think I would probably have lost faster if I had those cards nerfed. If that makes sense. Anyway, there's a defeat. We're going to now look at the other changes, which is um, charge and execute. <laughs> I'd just like to point out that uh, it's interesting that I'm playing against a shaman, that I've just finished being shaman. So, uh, but the fact that it's throwing out spirit claws uh, leads me to believe that it's probably a control shaman. This, I think now that the, the changes are coming, it's already had that change effect that people are now looking at what of the options there are for Shaman and Control Shaman is definitely a thing. This is my uh, OTK Warrior, uh, my attempt take on it. Um, obviously it has charge and execute in here. Um, the charge combo is basically because it gets the attack and I can go face. Um, I can basically do a one turn kill, hence OTK. The changes is that they are making it cheaper to charge, but they are taking off the attack bonus and you can't attack hero. So it's more of a, I've got a minion out and my minion can do stuff, um, but I'm not going to be ridiculously powerful with it, but I can affect the board to change. This is basically how it's going to work. Here's this case uh, with Execute. So I just dropped the Ravaging Ghoul, and I'm going to drop the Execute to destroy the damaged minion. Right now, I have so much mana crystals, it doesn't make any difference whether it's one mana or two. But uh, it's for the times when you are able to squeeze just that one mana that you can, you know, you can coin Execute, or you, know, you can do a bunch of stuff and then execute, and execute's really strong, but you know, you can damage it. And as a warrior, you can damage minions really easily, so that one, you know, mana makes, extra mana makes all the difference. <laughs> That's not how that works. Okay, I have one card off, and now I have the combo. So, Raging Wargan, into charge, in a rage, rampage, cruel taskmaster, into in rage. And that is why charge is being changed. Because when charge changes, that combo is gone. So it's like I'm playing a control priest, he has managed to drag the game out, and I, in just space of one turn, have just completely turned it around and he's not able to do anything. I mean, admittedly, it took a long time to get there, so there's plenty of time to prevent that from going off. Taunts help. Uh, 10 turns work no it was like the entire deck we were almost pulled before i could get that combo off so you know it doesn't happen very often it's otk is not very strong but there have been changes in the past that have prevented one turn kills like with druid the uh the, the one with the uh 
two two torn uh, sorry the two two trans coming out that was an OTK that has been nerfed so it's about time that this one also got nerfed because that's not kind of how you play the game you play the game where you build up you know cards and then you 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 interact with each other that one is an interaction that's a me playing solitaire playing all my cards and then just going in for the win so that one is being nerfed uh, execute as you saw it. Um, but not really to its most effectiveness. So, we'll, but that's how it works out. Anyway, we're going to move on to the next one now, which is Call of the Wild. Okay, so the card that's getting nerfed for Hunter is Call of the Wild. Currently, it is eight mana, and it is being increased by one to nine mana. The reason for this is Animal Companion is a three-cost spell, and you are getting all three Animal Companions, so you are effectively getting a discount of one which is actually really strong. Uh, so they're going to bring it into line, so you're effectively you're casting three spells one, so three threes are nine. Uh, the similar one to that is Ball of Spiders, where you're throwing three web spinners. Web spinner costs one, um, and you're summoning three of them, so that should in theory be three, but for some reason they've doubled that to six. Um, so Ball of Spiders is strictly worse. This is why Call of the Wild is so powerful. Ball Spiders is effectively a 1-1 one, one minion, which will allow you to get a random beast, which may be good or may be bad. With Call of the Wild, you are getting the charge to give our beasts plus one, oh no, sorry, all minions plus one, and the taunt. So you're getting three really strong cards for that cost. Uh, if you were going to be doing the same with the Ball Spiders, that you effectively double the amount of mana, you're looking at 18 mana, which is impossible because you only have 10. So they can't put it on the same balance curve, but I think it's good that they have increased it. And technically it should be a 10 mana, so I'm surprised it didn't make it 10 mana, um, but there we go, we have 9. So anyway, what we're going to do is uh, we're also going to look at Yogg-Saron. The changes to Yogg-Saron, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that if you get killed, put back to your hand or transform to the spell stop. So you can't make a ridiculous number of spells go off. He then dies, but the spells keep going. Potentially you can win through that. That's not what they want. That's not how Yorks were supposed to work. It's not how the others were, you know, when they did. That's kind of the end of their effect. Um, so the reason I'm doing it at the same time is because the hunter that I'm using is using uh, this particular spell. I find it. The Explorer's Hat. It's a spell and it can be used over and over again. So you put it on the minion, you cast a spell. You get when this minion dies, the spell comes back and you can just keep doing it. So you can basically stack up a ridiculous number of spells. So let's see how it goes and uh, we'll try and highlight some of the more interesting plays. So I've drawn the uh, Call of the Wild. And uh, I've basically won turn six. So this highlights the fact that even if uh, I coined, if it was turn seven, I can coin and get it turn eight. If it's turn eight, I can now coin turn nine. That's coming far. For a hunter, I've, I've, I've basically, I've won the game turn six. So Call of the Wild is a good card for if it gets that far into it, but you want to push it far enough ahead that it's a finisher rather than uh, I'm going to, you know, you can use it as a stabilizer if you're behind, just about, but it is a finisher. But generally, because the hunter is so fast anyway, you, you kind of over why then. So this is just allowing it to be a finisher. That's kind of my, where my rambling is going on that particular one. Does that make sense? Okay, so. We actually start the game with the Explorer's Hat, so this is good. This will probably allow us to get a lot of spells off. Maybe. Hopefully. Possibly. Okay, let's see what animals companion we get. Sweet. Twelve. Lethal. So even though I'm not getting the Yogg off, the fact that you can play the hat over and over again, it's still a very good card if you've got the minions. 
And again, no Call of the Wild, so I can't show that off. I only have one. But it is showing sort of the fact that you don't need these cards. That's the thing, is that usually when there's nerfs happening, there's a, oh, woe is me, it's the apocalypse, end is nigh, it's never going to happen again. This shows that, you know, you don't have to have that card in order to win. It's nice. I love just the concept of this animal wearing a little hat. It is uh, kind of cute. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I was about to kill Command my own beast. That would be incredibly stupid. Hat goes on. Interesting. Does that thus... Yeah. There's the hat gone. That is the downside to using the hat. Hat is now gone. And this is why Call of the Wild. Because it's not a finisher right now. Uh, do I want to kill off the... Okay, so... Potentially he can put all those back into my hand, so I want to kill off the Quest Adventure. There you go. Board Presence. One spell. Nice Board Presence. Kills his stuff off. Good times. Yeah, see, if I hadn't have killed his Quest Adventure, it would have been big again, and he would have been able to swing in, kill off Huffer. This is now preventing me from doing that. Here's Yorgsaron. I'm actually going to keep Yorgsaron in hand on the off chance that I might actually cast some spells. Which would be nice. I'm actually going to coin out something so I can contest his uh, turn two silver hand recruit play. Spell count, one. Okay, hat count, one. Spell count, two. Spell count, three. Hat count, two. I don't even know how I'm going to make it to turn ten at this rate. I have lethal next turn. He needs to play more minions, so I can trade minions. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay. He's reset the board. This is good. So spell count is now five and hats are four. Six spells. Seven spells. Eight spells. Nine spells. Hat count seven. Ideally, I want a minion next turn, so I can then get over 10 spells. That should then trigger enough spells from Yogg to potentially kill him, transform him, or return him to my hand to show that spells continue. Which you already knew, I guess, but I just wanted to show, show it off. There he is. Hat count 8, spell count 10, if my math is correct. Here we go.
Wow. That was, um, yeah, sadly, Yogg didn't cast enough spells to make me survive, which is a shame. But uh, overall, you know, even with ten spells going off, there was enough happening that Yogg survived. So I think the nerf to Yogg is, you know, justified. It keeps it fun. As an aside, I have played many games in order to get this clip. Um, sometimes I cast a lot of spells and didn't see Yogg. Sometimes I saw Yogg and didn't cast the spells. So I think where he is right now is good. I don't think there's any problem with the nerf. And I don't think it's going to change much afterwards. So there we are. There are all the cards that are being nerfed. Uh, in their glory. Um, I think what we've taken, what I've taken from this is that yes, they are powerful. You know, they allow big tempo plays. They allow a. They're ridiculously popular and they're overused, but they are, you know, not the be all and end all. You can still lose matches to them. You know, if the card doesn't come in, then you know. Um, you can still lose, but also the fact that you can still win matches even if the card isn't there. So, you know, yes, they need to be changed, but it's not the end of the world. You can still make viable decks, but that's what they, I think, is what Blizzard want is the fact that they want people to go out there and explore a bit more and do stuff. So that's, that's basically that. Does that all make sense? Good. I'm uh, rambling again, but uh, that's what I do. So, anyway, thank you for taking part and watching me on this uh, Sunday Ramble. Um, there'll be another video, another Sunday Ramble in the future, uh, probably about something different, well, definitely about something different. Uh, but thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your families, and until next time, game over, yeah! Over. Over. Yeah. yeah.